Hello everyone, this is a video of robotic tap repair for a case of indirect inguinoscrotal hernia. So it's a 70 year old man who uh, had underwent right open right inguinal hernioplasty uh, 5 years back. He's also having left inguinal swelling for last 4 years and it has increased uh, the swelling came up to the bottom of the scrotum. So it was inguinoscrotal hernia. So after going inside, uh, I have you using Da Vinci X uh, robot and uh, three robotic arms other than the camera port uh, right hand i'm using monopolar scissor mcs and the left hand i'm using fenestrated bipolar grasper so first thing after going inside uh, you can see the hernia contents were reduced and then peritoneal incision given at least five centimeter proximal to the upper border of the defect and uh, gradually uh, creating the uh, above arcuate line it is uh, partially retroactus and below arcuate line it is extra peritoneal or the pre peritoneal plane laterally also there is uh, uh, pre transversal is plane so as we go down the two planes the pre transversal is plane laterally and medially retroactus plane merges and forms one pre peritoneal plane so <coughs> gradually going down towards the pelvis you can see the under surface of the uh, left rectus abdominis muscle and the inferior epigastric uh, artery you can see just uh, lateral to the left rectus abdominis uh, so that is the inferior epigastric vessels so with good hand good uh, traction with your left hand instrument uh, you can uh, see the loose irregular tissue plane and just keep on dividing there will be small perforator uh, vessels uh, which can be easily cauterized using monopolar cautery here i was using 30 degree up camera initially to raise the flap as we go down and deep down into the pelvis i've changed my camera direction now to the 30 degree up and 30 degree down so uh, you can see and just uh, following the loose area tissue plane staying in between the two layers of trans fascia transversalis laterally the space of bogros will be created and medially the space of ridges will be created and uh, uh, gradually we uh, after creating medial and lateral space and then we'll uh, target the sac for sac dissection so you can see the loose areolar uh, tissue and just uh, dividing it uh, slowly uh, smaller blood vessels uh, sometimes uh, comes in a way that can be cauterized uh, very carefully and divided here uh, towards the space of ridges uh, just uh, giving good amount of traction with left hand instrument here you can see the articulating uh, tip of the robotic arms are helping me in dissection in this uh, plane here uh, the traction the counter traction is very important so i'm just gradually going towards the indirect defect area so this patient was having a, a complete sac so actually the hernial sac was containing the testes also so it's uh, it was a complete uh, sac so um, in complete sac sometimes uh, the dissection becomes difficult because you cannot completely reduce the sac inside at a certain point of time you have to divide the sac and uh, then repair it so gradually uh, once you pull the sac i have uh, found there is a large cord lipoma so I'm just trying to separate the cord lipoma from the lateral aspect of the sac. Here you can see the large cord lipoma. So just giving good amount of traction. So also I'm uh, ask my uh, <coughs> assistant, nursing assistant to put pressure from outside uh, so that the sac becomes inverted uh, towards the abdominal cavity. So you can see the cord lipoma is dissected off from the uh, hernial sac. So now again gradually uh, I am going uh, keeping the inferior epigastric above just uh, dividing all the loose areolar tissue so that uh, medial dissection medial side of the sac uh, dissection is also carried out in uh, slowly and gently. So here you can see uh, just as I keep pulling the sac inside it is coming and uh, continuous pressure from the outside it will help me manipulating uh, the sac from inside so here you can see i'm just uh, separating the cord structures the gonadal vessels now from the sac in the left hand i am pulling the sac and separating the gonadal vessels and pushing them away uh, staying uh, close to the uh, hernial sac here 
you can see little bit of uh, cauterization application of monopolar energy to cauterize smaller blood vessels but uh, max mostly uh, sharp and sharp and blunt dissection so gradually going distal aspect of the sac i'm just uh, trying to uh, see how much uh, the sac is extended downwards into the scrotum here so i just keep pulling the sac and dividing all the attachments of the sac with the cord structure so now the testis is gradually coming you can see the testis this is the testis which is gradually coming along with the sac so as i said it's a complete sac so i cannot uh, i have to divide the sac at this level so just uh, swing away the testis and the cord structure and uh, now that i have to divide the sac and just uh, just uh, clearing a little bit um, on the medial aspect and now the sac is open and uh, just uh, at the distal margin and dividing the sac with uh, gently so medially there will be a vast difference and laterally the gonadal vessels are already separated so i am just medially and being careful so that uh, once i divide the sac uh, i keep on sweeping away the rest of the structures which will contain the vast difference uh, that is medially and uh, again the idea is to divide the sac all around so there a small remainder part of the sac will stay along with the testis in the scrotum so you can see now it is uh, once you keep you keep on dividing the sac the cord structures and testis will go uh, inside the scrotum and here medially i will uh, encounter the vast difference so almost uh, complete sac division is almost complete the circumferential division of the sac division now the sac is completely divided and only left behind in the are the cord structures now the parietalization of the cord structures so here medially you can see the vast difference i am just trying to separate the uh, sac uh, from the cord structures gradually so that the uh, cord structures become cord structures will lie on the parietal wall and sac will come uh, towards me also creating further lateral space in that same plane to create a space of bogros you can see so i am creating the space of bogros nicely so that is the idea of uh, achieving the critical view of my pectineal orifice so you can see the uh, psoas muscle and the uh, and the overlying nerves are getting uh, exposed there is a thin layer uh, of fat which is covering our fascia which is covering the nerves that is dulux fascia that should remain intact and then further uh, parietalization is uh, carried out to mobilize the sac and it is all the addition of the sac from the uh, this and there is a division of the schrodel loop of schrodel now i'm dividing the loop of schrodel so that i can do further parietalization now i can clearly identify the uh, far vast difference and the gonadal vessels are getting uh, separated and from forming a triangle along with the peritoneal reflection that is the triangle of uh, doom and laterally the iliopubic tract and the gonadal vessels and the peritoneal reflection will form the triangle of pain where the whole nerves are there so idea is to at least uh, 5 to 6 cm parietalization should be done from the defect margin below at least 5 to 6 cm down and now the uh, you can see the cupus ligament is getting exposed all the uh, fat the uh, preperitoneal fat or the fat in this uh, indirect uh, hernial side is uh, divided dissected and uh, reduced here very gently i'm just uh, using a little bit of energy and traction counter traction and the area is getting exposed nicely this is the space of red gears the space between the pubic uh, rami and the urinary bladder that is the space of red gears so for the, uh, uh, for the completion of dissection to achieve critical view of safety you have to at least cross the two centimeter onto the opposite side so medially you have to dissect at least two centimeter beyond the midline between beyond the symphysis pubis 
and laterally also uh, you can see the psoas muscle the pulsation of the external iliac artery and uh, vein and now the sac opening you can see the divided sac uh, so once the dissection is complete and the hemostasis is confirmed then now my next thing is to close the uh, divided sac so i'm uh, using a 30 v lock which i have uh, kept inside uh, already before the starting the dissection so after before the docking i have kept the mesh and the 30 v lock inside so to the same uh, v lock i am closing the uh, peritoneal uh, i mean the sac margin so nicely it is closed so once it is closed uh, and the next thing is to place the mesh inside so here i'm using a, a mega suture cut needle driver which uh, you can uh, do suturing also in the inside of the needle holder the little uh, tip of the ins inside of the needle holder it has had a cutting uh, scissor so you can after at the end of the suture you can cut with the same needle holder the suture can be cut with the same needle holder so that is uh, the advantage of this mega suture cut needle driver now i have placed a 15 by 12 centimeter medium weight polypropylene mesh uh, inside in the myopectinal uh, orifice and the mesh is sitting nicely flat so now the last thing is to uh, flap closure the peritoneal flap closure again i have uh, changed my camera position from 30 degree uh, down to 30 degree up so that i can see the roof nicely so continuous suturing with 30 absorbable v lock suture and uh, before uh, deflating the new peritoneum i have to take out all the gas uh, from the uh, pre peritoneal area so that the peritoneum uh, is uh, the area gets deflated and the peritoneum gets uh, adhered with the uh, mesh and uh, that completes the operation the patient was the patient had an adventful recovery and discharge on first post operative day thank you for watching